Let's say you've got a half wavelength of wire. If you feed it in the middle, so there's a quarter wave on either side, then you've got a half wavelength dipole. And the impedance here is quite low, normally around 50 to 75 ohms. Generally speaking, if it's a dipole in free space, it's around 70, 72 ohm. If you bend the elements down, like you might need to do if you've only got a single mast and have lower poles on the ends, then it's an inverted V and the impedance might be nearer 50 ohms. But anyway, it's a fairly low impedance. Now, if you were to move the feed point towards one of the ends, um, let's say the feed point is right there, then you have a end fed half wavelength piece of wire. And the impedance at this point is much higher. It might be three to 5,000 ohms. Now, if you go to in between locations along the wire, as you go from the end to the middle, the impedance will fall. There'll be a point around here where the impedance is an intermediate value, and that's where some people have tried and used successfully off-center fed dipoles. And that may be convenient in some locations where, depending on your yard, your shack might be at one end of the yard and you're saving some length of cable and it's more convenient if you feed it off-center. There's also some other benefits, like you might be able to get multiple bands out of it. Um, so yeah, basically you can feed a half wavelength wire at any point along it, the impedance will vary, but you'll still get quite reasonable performance. Let us suppose you do the same, but you just turn it around so it's a vertical. You can do the same thing. You can feed it right at the base, half wavelength vertical, a good antenna, or you could feed it in the middle, but that is much less convenient because what do you do with a feed line? Like if it drops straight down, then you might mess the radiation pan. Ideally, it should be brought at 90 degrees to the vertical wire. Another approach, and there's types of antennas that you could use the coaxial, build them out of coaxial cable, like the well-known flower pot antenna on two meters. Um, but overall, it's a bit tricky to feed a vertical dipole in the middle, especially for lightweight portable use. So you can feed it down the bottom, use it just as an end fed half wavelength. Um, you might have a bit of wire as a counterpoise. Or another thing, and this is what I'm going to try and do today, is feed it a bit up from the bottom. I'm going to have 0.8 of a meter just below the feed point and the rest, let's say 6.4 meters. And you add those two and it's 7.2 meters. That is close enough to a half wavelength on 15 meters or the 21 megahertz band. And here you don't have very much coaxial cable. You can just have this going into say an antenna coupler and then going into your transceiver and because we're feeding it near one end the impedance will be quite high so you'll need some form of antenna coupling that matches your 50 ohm at the transceiver to your high impedance you couldn't just connect it straight from your transceiver into the antenna unlike if you had a half wave dipole fed in the middle in which case you can and with any luck, with an antenna coupler that you can vary the capacitance and inductance of, you might be able to get several bands out of it, which can be handy, especially in these times of improving HF conditions, where if 15 metres is open, then the chances are that 12 metres and 17 metres can also give you some DX contacts. So, potentially quite good for portable operating. Now as for the antenna, well, I can just use a piece of wire, doesn't have to be very thick, 
and I can use a fishing pole and that can just be hammered into the ground with a piece of angle aluminium just to hold it into the sand and then you have a vertical antenna it's half wavelength long approximately it might be a bit more or a bit less if you use other bands either side and Another thing that's potentially useful is there's no radials. So if you're sitting on the beach and there's other people around, then not having radials is a good thing. Just to test the antenna, I'm going to set it up in the yard. This is the antenna itself. At the top of the wire, I've just got a piece of chopping board hole here for the wire which is vertical, a bigger hole to thread over the rod. Its diameter is enough for it to slip about 80 centimeters down from the top of the rod. That places it on a more rigid part of it than if I just had it right at the top where it's much more floppy. This is the antenna coupler I'm using. It's an L-match. It's designed for QRP. I've described it in a previous video. The variable capacitor is from 10 to about 160 picofarads. The inductor, I have 1, 3 and 8 microhenry. I doubt I'll be needing 8, but that's just to provide a small amount of inductance in this L-match. I may need two microhenry. I'll have a look and see what bands I can get this to tune up on. So here's the bottom of the antenna. It's very, very off center. This is about 80 centimeters. And up here, the vertical section, the remainder about 6.4 meters. So a total of 7.2. Now what bands can I get this to tune up on? Well, as you just saw, I'm okay on 21 megahertz, this being a half-wave vertical. That 21 megahertz was achieved with three microhenry. Ooh, ooh. 24 megahertz is okay, that's achieved with one microhenry. Twenty eight megahertz, also one micro Henry. Eighteen megahertz, again one micro Henry. Fourteen megahertz, also one micro Henry. I can get it to tune up on ten megahertz with three micro Henry. At this frequency, the antenna is about a quarter wavelength. Next thing I'll do is try some FT8. So I've got the FT8CN app, which works on Android. I've done a previous review of it. And we'll see if I can make some contacts. And there's a contact with JA3QOS. Wasn't out here for very long, but got four contacts. Two on 12 meters to JA, another JA on 17 meters, and VK5 on 20 meters. As for who's received me, looking at PSK Reporter, this is 10 meters, basically contacts, or should I say reports, in VK6 in Indonesia, where it's still light, as well as Darwin. This is 12 meters, a wider area, most notably into Japan, 15 meters, 
wider still including Japan and North America 17 meters is possibly the widest Japan North America and a bit of Europe 20 meters a little bit of Japan a little bit of Europe but most solidly North America 30 meters mostly the Pacific and North America I was testing this antenna from a poor location right near home can't vouch for its performance against other antennas but I will have in a few days a video based on this antenna that I think you should all watch I can promise you it will be very interesting and you'll want to be doing experiments yourself on this that's in a few days time but until now let me know what you think and if you've just experimented with vertical off-center half-wave antennas or any other wavelength then please let me know in the comments below